Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we invite you into our presence, wherever we are, participating in Know Your Feet. We thank you for being able to host this series to inform about and spread the Catholic faith to our sisters and brothers. We ask your blessings on our presenters, our listeners, those who facilitate this production, that we may be guided by your Holy Spirit in presenting and receiving your word. We pray that all who benefit may come to a deeper understanding and appreciation of the Catholic faith that will guide our living. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son and our brother. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, viewers, to another episode of Know Your Faith. I am your host, Nyron Rollingson. A special welcome to those joining us internationally, regionally, on TV, and on social media. Our special guest presented this year, this session, is no stranger to our Know Your Faith series. He is Father Eliaza Mulemba. Father Eliaza will be presenting to us the topic, Building Community, Inclusivity, and Dialogue, Biblical Perspectives, Old Testament Approaches and New Testament Approaches. In our last session, we looked at Old Testament Approaches, but in this session, we will be looking at New Testament Approaches. And just to recap what we covered in the last session, but Eliezer took us through the, the, the scriptures and brought out for us the importance of God's constant communication through scripture, especially as it relates to the prophets. And he brought out the themes of communication, ownership, consultation and union for us and helped us uh, relate these concepts back to our concrete experience as church. So we once again, thank Father Eliezer for joining us. Welcome, Father Eliezer. Indeed, in this effort to build community, inclusivity and dialogue, we cannot but look at the approach in the Bible and as we go forward, looking now at the New Testament approach to building community, inclusivity, and dialogue, we have an interesting journey to go through uh, with Jesus, his disciples, and the kind of community that he was building. Just as in the Old Testament, the style was based on communication, the New Testament or well, the Second Testament picks up from that communication and takes a style of revelation, which is, in fact, God's self-communication. Revelation that we are talking about, which is the approach in the New Testament, is God's self-communication. In our synodal process, it is important that we look at the biblical perspective and communication runs through all the books. So the New Testament style, the New Testament approach is the revelation, which we are defining as God's self-communication. In the Gospels, Jesus is presented as the revelation of God. And so when we look at all the birth accounts of Jesus, or sometimes you may hear them being referred to nativity, narratives. Uh, the birth accounts set the tone of how God communicates God's self to all creation. From such standpoint of revelation, Jesus goes on to build community, inclusivity, and dialogue in his public ministry. But we're looking at Matthew's gospel, Luke's gospel, Mark, and John as all having the infancy narratives. These infancy narratives are uh, revealed to us that Jesus is actually the revelation of God. Through Jesus, we have come to know God, and God has been revealed to us. And in, 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 um, in this style of revelation, what God in the, in the incarnation, what God has given is not 
a part of himself, but God has communicated God's self. What God has given in the birth accounts of Jesus, all of them, as you see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what God has given to the world, to humanity, to the universe, is not a part of himself, but God's self. God has communicated God's self, and that's what we are calling revelation. Now, after the birth accounts, then Jesus goes on to build up community, inclusivity, and dialogue through his teaching, healing, governing, casting out demons, liberating ministries, his, his preaching ministry, exercising all his you know, ordinary activities, um, as also in this ordinary time, ordinary season of the liturgy, church liturgy, we, we look at what things Jesus does ordinarily flowing out of his nature, flowing flowing from him without making so much effort. Those are the teaching, the healing, the preaching, the liberating, the governing or the leading, guiding uh, people. So in these ministries, Jesus is also building community because he is revealing himself and he's sharing goals in his mission, thereby making the community he was building much more inclusive. In, in doing this, Jesus made the community that he was building much more inclusive in the sense of he revealed in, in healing ministry, in teaching ministry, in everything, he revealed who he was. To, to the people. And in that, in that style of revelation, revealing who he was, he formed a kind, he built a kind of a community. He was so inclusive as he made himself known to the people. In the New Testament approach, community, inclusivity, and dialogue are built by a way of openness. That's what I'm talking about in Revelation, by a way of openness, exposure no matter how vulnerable that would have made persons. So, for example, we look at the I am statements that we find most commonly in, in the gospel according to John. I am the resurrection. I am the bread of life. Jesus shares his identity, his vulnerability, and his life with others. Today, inclusivity is a, a bit of a challenge in our church, in our experience as church, as society, because persons are afraid to reveal themselves to each other for fear of, of rejection maybe. But yet the New Testament style is of sharing everything. In Acts chapter 20, 35, the whole community of believers was united, one heart, and one soul, sharing everything they had. And also we know in the Gospels, Jesus said that I have told you everything. And to add on top of that, Jesus would have said that even the helper, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. That means there's nothing to hide. But we can ask the same question that John Powell once asked, why am I afraid to tell you who I am? And the answer he gave was that, uh, I am afraid to tell you who I am, because if I tell you who I am, you may not like who I am. And yet, who I am is all I have, is all I got. So why am I afraid to tell you who I am? Today, uh, inspired by the New Testament approach of Revelation, we are encouraged to be open to one another and tell, reveal ourselves to each other in our vulnerable state, because that will bring up the idea of inclusivity, that persons will tell us who they are, who they really are, not be afraid, and then we will accept them as they are. That's what inclusivity means. That's what, and we journey together. But from Revelation, we look at Jesus building a community through the vocation to discipleship. So Jesus founded a community by calling disciples. You know, in all the four Gospels, we have these core narratives, the story of vocations. In Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, John 1, 43, Mark 3, 13 to 19, Matthew 10, 1, to four. And just one here you'll find in Mark chapter three, 
Verse 13, then Jesus went up a hill and called to himself the men he wanted. They came to him and he chose 12, whom he named apostles. I have chosen you to be with me, he told them. So in this way, he called uh, disciples to companionship. And the, then from there on, the New Testament keeps on talking about Jesus and his disciples. Jesus and his disciples. It is amazing today. We focus only on the community of 12. The community Jesus built is a community of 13 because Jesus is part of that community. The New Testament always says Jesus and his disciples. So if you do the mathematics there, it's really 13, not 12. But oftentimes we talk about the 12 foundation stones, the 12, the 12. Let us learn a, a certain language of inclusivity by talking about the community of the 13. That is the community. Jesus built. In the New Testament approach, it is always that community, a more inclusive way of talking about Jesus and the 12 disciples community of the 30. Thank you. Thank you, Father Eliasa, for that first segment. Now, as you say, Jesus and the disciples um, make up this 13. I, I wonder though, um, many of us go to church and we experience, we say we come to experience God, but we usually limit that to the um, the Eucharistic experience. But it doesn't extend to the other ways um, God manifests himself in the community. Um, how, how can this vision of the New Testament approach um, transform that way of operating and that, 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 that way we go about doing church? Mm -hmm. You know, indeed, in our experience of church, sometimes we focus so much on the um, on the Eucharist. But actually, but what is the Eucharist in the in the real sense? Inspired by this effort to build community, you see, Jesus calls disciples into a community. By that calling, simply he built a community. He started a community, founded a community, community which we call church, which we proudly belong to. And so we, we need to find a way to talk about that community all the time. Um, in, in when we go to mass, for example, and, um, we go to mass as a community. We are a community worshiping God, a community offering sacrifice. That is why we, we, we really and truly all of us celebrate Holy Mass. Um, it's not the priest alone. And even the, for the priest, the language is challenged. I don't go to say mass. I go to celebrate mass. And also in the language of everybody should be, um, are you going to celebrate mass this weekend? And if somebody is not seeing who is talking, they may think he's talking to, he's asking a priest. But in, in real sense, we should be asking everybody because we all celebrate mass. And so, the whole order of mass beginning from when we gather and then beginning from either we have praise and worship before uh, or then we have the entrance song beginning from the entrance song up to the recessional song the whole part of the mass is the eucharist the whole part and then we the people who gather are the eucharist the, the, the real eucharist is the people are the people that gather that is the eucharist because that is the body of Christ, what we call the Corpus Christi, that's the people who are gathered in community to celebrate that sacrifice of the cross of Jesus Christ. So the real Eucharist is the, the Corpus, that body is that one that gathers. So that, that sacred host is really and truly, and when it is elevated, it is all of us who are elevated. When you see that horse elevated, and say, this is my body, or when the priest says, this is, behold the Lamb of God, and he elevates the, the, that sacred host, that host really and truly is us, is, is, is you and me on the pews elevated. It's you and me on the pews lifted up. That is the body of Christ. We, the body of Christ. So it, as, as long as we strengthen that body, then we will, we will know that we will, and that's what means communion. It means we receive each other. Communion is not just we are going forward to receive something and come back. It's, it's, it will be the same as going through the drive-through uh, drive 
at KFC, we go press the order and receive and go home. No, but communion is, it means we receive each other. I'm receiving you, you are receiving me because we are the body of Christ. I think that understanding might help us in the effort to build inclusivity, uh, uh, community and dialogue. Thank you, Father. All right, so let's go straight into the second segment of the New Testament approach with respect to inclusivity dialogue. Okay, so let's go. All right, thank you. In the New Testament approach, companionship is the style, as we have seen in the core narrative that I quoted from Mark's, Mark's Gospel, chapter 3, from verse 13. The communal dimension of discipleship is emphasized, especially by the calling of the two sets of brothers or two pairs of brothers in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. We would have gone through that um, this previous weekend's mass uh, in our literature. We would have gone through that, uh, that Jesus found the two pairs of brothers and called them into discipleship and say, promise I will make you fishers. Of men, and so the the and then that that is a communal dimension because that indicates that he's he's calling them not just for work but he's calling them to be companions first of all companions with with each other. That's why we have that set of a pair of uh, brothers is is a companionship we are called to. That's the style. That's the approach of the New Testament, and the inclusion of marginalized people in Jesus' entourage. You know, is is exemplified in the call of the tax collector Matthew, in Matthew chapter nine, verse nine to thirteen, and also others for whom there is no core narrative or there is no vocation story in the Bible recorded as yet as such, but are clearly disciples of Jesus. In those we see also inclusivity, because for example, women who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, as it is recorded in Matthew 27, verse 55, um, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, in, in Matthew 27, 56. And another note of inclusivity is the identification of Joseph of Arimathea, also as a disciple of Jesus in verse 57 of chapter 27 of Matthew's gospel. The point is that all these are called to build community and the method is discipleship of companionship. These are not simply followers of Jesus, but they are companions with Jesus and with each other. And through the, the calling, so he calls them, that, that is a, a, an approach to build community. By calling, he builds community, making them companions with him and with each other. Apart from forming a community through the calling of the disciples, Jesus also formed teams of that community. Teams can be observed in the sending of the 72 in Luke chapter 10, verse 1 to 12. And, you know, formation of teams can be an effective way of building community as it supports a spirit of sharing. You know, I, I, was, I, I often say he sent them two by two, two by two, so they can be a team, two by two. And in that way, they'll be sharing. And they give feedback. In Luke 10, verse 17 to 20, we find that they give in, in a form of excitement where well, we were able to do this and this, we were not able to do this, that, that kind of a feedback. In, in, in community building and inclusivity is what is needed because there's a dialogue with Jesus and with each other. And the growth from the team experiences, surely there was growth when they experienced these teams. What purports for the inclusivity also in the New Testament approach and, and the dialogue is a special recognition of the other person. Jesus always engaged persons who would otherwise be socially silent, tax collectors, lepers, the sick and the sinners. Jesus engaged all these people into, into dialogue, into he could dine with them in a, in a, in a sense to show that uh, Jesus was really for an inclusive kind of community. His vision of a community that he was building is a vision that was much more inclusive. A, 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 a vision whereby 
as, as some other person is considered in a certain sense, in a special way. There was a sensitivity to the other, especially when we read a lot of Luke's gospel, we find a sensitivity to the other that people were not really thinking about. For example, in the story of the, 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 the multiplication of, of bread and fish, you see that for, for, for the gospel, people would say there is a little boy here with fish, two fish and five loaves. Perhaps no one would have recognized this little boy. But in the style of the New Testament, such are the people who are recognized. And through that recognition that there's a little boy here with his two fish, that recognition leads to, you, you see how much more inclusive that is. Because of the recognition of another person who might be socially silent, it leads to the feeding of the 5,000, feeding and more, because from the little that we have. So if we are to be an inclusive church, we need to pay attention or to be sensitive to the other persons who would otherwise be uh, socially silenced. And we begin where we are in this effort because somebody said coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is a progress. Working together is a, actually a success. So Jesus began with where he was, where he was, where the people were, that is where we begin. That is where we can all start from. Start with the commonality that we have. From, from the New Testament, the effort to build community, inclusivity, and dialogue starts with constant communication, sharing a common agenda, identity. So inspired by these approaches, we too could start from where we are with what makes us common. We look around and see what is it that is common uh, among us and what we build community inclusivity and dialogue from that which is common. I, I often remember Chinua Achebe's uh, discourse that we come out of our houses when the moonlight shines, not because I cannot see the moon from my house, but because we are a community and we should start building community from where we are then when the moonlight shines, we come out and we come together. And, and, and I find that this is a strong sense that is also found in the New Testament approach that from where people are, that is where, from what we have, like the example of the little boy with two fish, from what we have and from where we are, with the sensitivity of the other present, we could begin to build community, inclusivity and dialogue we could come together in the, in our, if, if it is faith that brings us together, let we are people who are faith after faith after faith. If it is faith after faith, then let it be community after community after community, community, inclusivity after inclusivity until we find ourselves indeed working together for a common goal. So we can start with what's common among us. Thank you. Thanks again for the areas. I, I would just say that um inclusivity is a mouthful. Huh? I don't I mean fat after fat after that sounds easier for people, but inclusivity and <laughs> this thing sounds a bit a mouthful. But yes, I'm sorry. But, but we can start with what sounds e easy for people. That's that's what, thank you for pointing that out. Start yeah. with that which is maybe easy for people. Yes. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. No. As you as you were speaking, um, I I got this image of Jesus as a foundation, and we building a society, um, you know, of of companionship with discipleship. I think you said discipleship of companionship. I think you said, that that you said right. Now, one one image that comes to mind. I mean, I, I find at least from my experience among Catholics, is a great difficulty with working with people, and we see that there's um, generational divide. Um, among other things, you know, um, even with people who are differently able, they are excluded. People who may have um, strong political views or, you know, we're seeing a lot of, of these themes playing out in our church today. And I just wonder, um, to what extent can we find some tools out of this particular idea of discipleship, of companionship and, and the others that you mentioned? What kind of concrete tools we can walk away with in order to overcome these challenges we face in our community? 
All right, thank you so much. Indeed, from the New Testament approach, we have spelled out certain tools which may help us in building community inclusivity and dialogue. And um, first of all is, is what we, the note we ended with, the first two I would point out is that there's a certain theology of otherness. And now this, this is not an intellectual thing, although we are calling it a theology of otherness, but it's not simply an intellectual thing. It is a certain call to be sensitive of the needs of others. And so you have already mentioned there uh, people who may be differently able, people with strong uh, political views that may not go well with some of us, people who are just different. And so in that sense, it, 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 the two of the theology of otherness will help us to be very, very sensitive to the needs of others so that we don't just go on excited that we are church, we are going on and on, but we are not actually responding to, to the needs of other people. Other people, like for example, people who have strong um, political views that are different from what we may hold, what we may have, even what different from what we as a church teach, we still can enter into dialogue with them. How? Because um, you want to, to find out what is really underlying their need. What can I learn from this uh, that strongly opposes what I believe? As, as hard as that is, but it's possible because when you look at those strong views, they, they give you a different kind of perspective. Just in the synodal process, I'm sure that when we had consultations with non-Catholics, for, for instance, we had a certain understanding of church that we wouldn't have known if we did not consult them. So we need to enter into dialogue even with people who are too different from us in terms of faith, experience, even race, even how we, we do our things and understanding. We need, in a certain sense, sacrifice certain uh, long-held traditions so we could engage people in, in the, in the, in, into dialogue. We may learn something from them. And that what we learn with an, a certain amount of pain will always be treasured. I often encourage people to say, what you learn with pain, you will always treasure. You will never actually forget. So um, you put it quite right, that too, theology of, uh, is, uh, of otherness, sensitivity of the other. There's always another person that Jesus always recognized and his disciples. There's always another person that we, we have. Also, we can look at... Um, we, we we look at what we have as church, as society, the things that we already have. We don't have to look at um, the things that we don't have, we are simply aspiring to have. But look around what we have. As a church, first of all, we when we consider that everybody who comes is a gift to the church as they are, before they contribute anything and and and, and people we now there's much to talk about what people are bringing to the church, but they forget that they bring themselves. And so consider parishioners are the best resources we can, we can ever have. As they are, as they bring themselves, that, that is a, a tool we can, we can consider, consider what we already have and, and not look too far to what we aspire to have. Consider the people as a gift before they can bring anything to the table, the fact that they've brought themselves, that we can work with that and we can begin from that to build community of inclusivity and dialogue and dialogue with, uh, with people of all. And also let's make use of the creation, the environment that we have. Uh, we are talking about building community. This community is not just a human community, you know. it's a community inclusive of all created things. We are talking about in our churches, we don't just have people, we have uh, all the natural environment around us. We want to build a community that includes those, uh, those people. So that kind of uh, an, an eco-friendly community is what we want to build. So let's make use of the environment we have. They speak to us much more 
than we can just stand on the pulpit and, and, and preach God's word. So we can have another two as from the natural environment, look around and see uh, what we have in order to build community inclusivity and dialogue. Thank you, Father, for those very practical tools which I think we can put in practice today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you. You always give us, show us the way, give us opportunities to be better persons, better church, better parish, better archdiocese, better society. Lord God, we pray that you bless our efforts to build community, inclusivity, and dialogue. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. And thank you, viewers, for joining us on this journey over two sessions where we spoke about building community, inclusivity and dialogue, biblical perspectives, Old Testament approaches and New Testament approaches. Continue joining us, joining us for our Know Your Faith series. <laughs>